pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Commissioner. So please bow your heads and join me for the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. As forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thank you all. Good morning. Our next public workshop will be Tuesday, August 27th, 10.30 a.m. in this room. And our next regular meeting will be Wednesday, August 28th, 10.30 a.m. also in this room. Madam Clerk? Mr. Cantala Mesa? Here. Ms. Frenchko? Here. Mr. Malloy? Here. Item number one is to dispense with reading the minutes of the workshop session dated August 13th, 2024, and the regular meeting dated August 14th, 2024, and accept and approve the video recordings of both meetings as the official meeting minutes. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cantalamesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. Frenchko? Uh, because they're skipping, they're not transcribed correctly, their people aren't announcing their names before they speak as they should be if the um if the video recordings are to be used uh no item number two is to approve the bills uh, motion to approve second mr cantala mesa yes mr malloy yes miss french co yes item number three is to approve additional appropriations Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cantalamesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. Frenchko? Yes. Item number four is to approve decrease of appropriations. Motion to approve. Second that. Mr. Cantalamesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. Frenchko? Yes. Item number five is to approve transfer of appropriations. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cantalamesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. Frenchko? Yes. Item number six is to adopt a resolution approving the submitted list labeled as ORC 5705.41D, July 2024, of purchase orders to the various vendors as then and now purchase orders in compliance with ORC. Motion to approve. Second that. Mr. Cantalamesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. Frenchko? Yes. Item number seven is to notify the Department of Liquor Control that a public hearing is not requested for the new liquor permit listed. And that's Frayers LLC doing business as Isaac's drive through in Howland Township. Motion to approve. Second that. Mr. Cantalamesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. Frenchko? Yes. Item number eight is to notify the Department of Liquor Control that a public hearing is not requested for the transferred liquor per permit application, and that's Champion Lanes and Entertainment Center, Inc. to Champion Bowl and Entertainment, Inc. doing business as Champion Lanes and Long Boys Tavern and Patio. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cantalamesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. Frenchko? Yes. Item number nine is to approve the amendments to the bylaws of the Workforce Development Board of Trumbull County. On August 8th, 2024, the bylaws bylaw committee met for its annual review. It is necessary to initiate the bylaws for the Workforce Development Board to follow in its operation under the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. Motion to approve. Second that. Um, discussion. I just got an email this morning that Mr. Danza is on there um, and suggesting that, that that they were obviously approved by you because you were on the board. Is that what that meant? No. 
Dimitri Leogis, Workforce Development Board. Uh, the email um, that I sent uh, Commissioner French was she had some questions yesterday concerning the bylaws. And I may have miscommunicated uh, with her. Her initial uh, <clears throat> response was to for the proxy, the section uh, that we discussed about the proxy. Yeah. And that, unfortunately, I miscommunicated. And that's not a new section. That's been in there since, since its inception in 2015. The change in that section was simply to allow the proxy to count towards the quorum. That's all. It, so, anything, and that's what I was looking for something that, that speaks yeah. to that. And the yeah, there's no the law to it. What it was is it wasn't a federal or a law thing. What it was was a Robert's Rules of Order thing because in Robert's Rules of Order, a proxy doesn't count towards quorum. So we made that amendment to that specifically. Mm -hmm. But I was just looking to verify it. There's a rule that governs that it wasn't the you saw where you sent me the link that's the federal the register yeah the and whole thing yeah yes but it should have it it connected to somewhere where it actually spoke to that and i didn't see where it said that the quorum could be comprised of people who were proxies that's a robert that's there's no law to that what that was was a was a robert's rules of order because in strategically when we put it when we updated the bylaws at the very end, we say uh, Robert's Rules of Order governs, and then we add it at the end, unless otherwise noted in the bylaws. So we follow Robert's Rules of Order outside outside of any change within that yeah, to, the, to the bylaws. The, and, and when we submit agenda items, we have, uh, they're supposed to be coming over with something that says that they were approved by the prosecutor's office. So whenever you said, well, there's two attorneys on the board and well, uh, yeah, it, was our, it made me believe that that's what. You no, were. Yeah, what I wrote in the email was that uh, part of our bylaws committee has two lawyers on it, and then I did a presentation to the commissioners yesterday. Uh, Mr. Okay. Danzo was present during that conversation, and oh, no yeah. issues were arised by. Yeah, no issues were brought forward by the lawyers that were in the bylaws committee or Mr. Danzo concerning oh. counting somebody. Stop right there. I just, there's no disrespect. I right. just have to be clear, but I, we've had this talk a number of times. My presence in a meeting right. doesn't mean that I tacitly approve everything that happens at the meeting. Right. If there's a request for opinion, it can be made to our office. But and I'm not saying right. we necessarily needed one in this case. That's up to you guys. But right. I, I just don't want any misperception that just because I happen to be in a meeting that that is my approval of everything that happens at the meeting. That's just yeah, right. Case. Yeah, I mean we have a the budget commission had been doing things wrong with the representative from the prosecutor's office on there too so it doesn't necessarily mean that that that's right well if if, if it's okay for the commissioners we can postpone it by a week yeah. and have no, the... you're, you're absolutely fine. let's that's move forward danzo making a reply to this is is it whenever we, procedurally whenever we put things on the agenda we send them over with um a, a letter that says that the, the um or something that says it was approved by the prosecutor. I didn't see anything on the attachments that said that. No, because okay. it wasn't brought forward to him at all. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. So for item number nine, Mr. Cantala Mesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchco. Um, I because I just don't feel like I have enough information and it didn't come through properly with the approval from the prosecutor's office. I'm just going to abstain. Item number 10 is to award the lowest and best bids and enter into agreements for the youth build of Trumbull Me Metropolitan Housing Authority and Jobs for Ohio graduates to provide youth services through the WIOA Comprehensive Case Management Program. The RFP selectees will provide youth services as they pertain to the 14 elements of youth development towards employment. A motion to approve. Second that. Mr. Cantalamesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. Frenchco? Yes. Item number 11 is to approve a resolution to commit $100,000 in American Rescue Plan Act funds to the resurfacing of McCleary Jacoby Road, Township Highway 201, from State Route 46 to State Route 305. This resolution of commitment is necessary for Bezetta Township to apply for OPWC funding for said project. Motion to approve. Second that. Mr. Cantalamesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. Frenchco? Yes. 
Item number 12 is to concur with the county engineer to grant the special hauling permit to haul steel coils on Trumbull County roadways requested by the company listed. And that's J Road Transportation Services, Inc. A motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cantalamesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchko. Yes. Item 13 is to concur with the county engineer to grant the special annual supplier fleet permits requested by the companies listed. Lake Erie Golf Cars, LLC, and Cooper & Sons Cartage, Inc. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cantalamesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchko. Yes. Item 14 is to concur with the county engineer to grant the right-of-way permit requested by the company listed. Set, Inc. A motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cantalamesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchko. Yes. Item 15 is to award a price proposal to Miller Yount Paving, Inc. for the Howland Scope Center parking lot resurfacing project in the amount of $51,564 and to authorize the Board of Commissioners to enter into a contract agreement with Miller Yount Paving in order to meet rules and regulations of CDBG programming and local county requirements. Motion to approve. Second that. Mr. Cantalamesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. Frenchko? Yes. Item 16 is to authorize the advertisement of a public notice in a newspaper of general circulation on Friday, August 30th, 2024, announcing the PY 2024 CDBG RPIG second public hearing for the Pendleton Gilmer Sanitary Sewer Project located in the low and moderate income LMI consent decree area of Meadowbrook in Warren Township and to authorize the Trumbull County Planning Commission to prepare and submit the PY 2024 application in the amount of $750,000 and to authorize the president of the Board of Commissioners, Denny Malloy, to sign and execute any and all documents related to the application, administration, receipt, execution, and implementation of funds received through the PY 2024 CDBG RPIG. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cantalamesa. Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchko. Yes. Item 17 is to award a contract to TK Excavating and Grading LLC for the Townsend Avenue Storm Drainage Infrastructure Improvements Project funded through the PY22 Community Development Block Grant Critical Infrastructure Grant Program and the CDBG Revolving Loan Fund in the amount of $368,149.40. Motion to approve. Second that. And then um, I have uh, just one more follow-up question um, because I read what the prosecutor's office sent to the Planning Commission, and it says that there wouldn't be a problem as long as the original bid package said that it was per allowable to waive irregularities. Does anyone know if it actually said that? The, does it? Did you get a copy from the Planning Commission and request a copy of it? There's no one from the Prose Planning Commission here. The pro yeah, there's no one from the Planning Commission here. And the prosecutor's office said that in his uh, opinion was if that's the case, then it's okay. But what is that the case? And then it also said that did the the other question for the was does the planning did the, did the RFP actually require that the delinquent tax act affidavit be part of it. I think it did, which was why there was a problem, but, but it said that it could be waived as long as the bid package said we could. So I don't know 
and, and since she gave it to you to review, that's why I was asking. Okay, first of all, uh, Bill Danso from the county prosecutor's office. Um, this is something I've kind of told the board I, I don't think is a good idea, but it's your call. It, I don't think it's a good practice to discuss legal advice in the middle of an open meeting, uh, but here we are again. Uh, you've essentially read the contents of my advice and my, my advice speaks for itself. Whether or not that is included, what decision the board wants to make from there, and I, I'm not sure you've accurately exactly quoted what my letter said either, but um, I, th I think that what this needs to be is hashed out before we get to the public meeting on this and not in the middle of a public session. I sent you an email and you, in essence, just regurgitated what what um, was already sent to. Right, regurgitated it in that I sent you a copy of the legal the opinion. It wasn't necessarily right, but it was generated on this particular matter. So I, I don't know if regurgitated is the right word, but OK, it's the same thing. There is nothing there is. It was the exact same thing that Julie Green sent us. Right, because that's the opinion that that we did on that topic I'm missing whether or not. There was. Uh, the allowance of the board to waive the irregularities. And I don't know if it was in there. And if you're reviewing it, I was assuming that you looked at that. Well, I, I'm assuming that that you guys follow the advice that I give. I, I guess I, I'm not sure. Well, you gave it to Julie. Julie. Sure, so sure. are you assuming that she followed that advice? Maybe her, yeah. maybe the board. I, I'm not sure. I, I gave legal advice on it. And I, that's my advice. I, I guess I don't know what else... I suppose you could have us re-review everything to see what's in there, but, but the bottom line is that once we say, hey, here's what the legal advice is, it's then kind of our client's job to to follow it and make sure that it's what it is. Right, and I know and we are the client. me several times that you don't answer anything from one person and uh, that would take the majority of the board to request uh, any information from you. However, when you sent over all the information, you made whole opinions about one commissioner going up there over the injection well and sent it to us. And you didn't, you even concealed the name of the person who came to see you. It said a member of the board came to see me about the injection, the letter and the packet that you sent related to the injection well. So I, I just have to this, caution you. There's a difference between between whenever one other person asks we you, we talked and you about give, that at a public give, meeting last Wednesday, and agreed that the prosecutor should review full information. But whenever I ask you something, you are like, "This is what I gave someone else, and I can't do anything more unless the board says." Yeah, I'm this say, sounds like right. this sounds like something that the question you're asking him now, and just like he explained here, should be done in the workshop. And we do have a workshop, and we had it yesterday, and you weren't there, and now you yeah, want to bring it up during the meeting. Yeah, on the phone doesn't mean nothing. Okay. Once you once you get up you and come to work really and then actually sit there and hash it out okay, so in a yeah, workshop. Yesterday, you could have took all day long and you could have got your answer done okay, all day yesterday. You're asking about information. Well, where is it? What well, was in your email and you didn't read it? So you just show up, and it doesn't matter if you're here or not. You're still not doing the work to review things and find out if it's okay. So it yeah. a question like that, like he just said, that's something not to be done. On, on the meeting day. That's something you do at a workshop. That's something you work out in advance. Should your plan said, got you again. No, you're wasting no, time. The plan, you're censored. The plan is, it's a, your, your vote the, doesn't matter on this one way or another. The and planning, you're, you're doing nothing but grandstanding. And the planning we're not going to tolerate the that today. Commission should have sent over the verification to say, hey, we if they want us, if they recommended something and recommended for us to wave an irregularity they should underscore the in the actual bidding the re response that they that we actually said that we we were waiving those irregularities so how can they recommend something without showing it that's their job to say hey hey board of commissioners we want you to waive irregularities but we're not going to show you that we allowed it that should just be. If you'd asked that question yesterday, I'm sure it's, they would have showed you. Asking questions about sending things over with the supporting information, like they're supposed to, for everything that we vote on that goes on the agenda. We're supposed to be, um, we're supposed to be meticulous and um, professional, and and. Uh, when are you going to start? And and doing our jobs. You know, sure. very we are we are significantly under the engineer's estimate here. And I think that we should act on this for the good of the 
Trumbull County, because if those bids come in again, they might be a lot higher. I think we have what we need. If you feel uncomfortable voting yes, then vote no. Wrong thing. It's not it's the wrong not thing. Okay. You're, you're putting words in people's mouth. It's not the wrong thing. It's, it's an administrative decision. It's not an. He even says that he said it's an administrative decision if the bid package allows us to waive the irregularities. And I don't have a copy of that. And she you should ask for it. We want to rebid this sweet. with the potential of it going over right the engineer's now. estimate, she wasting time and resources. She sent it over to us. Ridiculous. She should have sent it over Call to us. Call the question. She should have sent it over to us. Okay, so Wait. He got all the question. We're moving on. Mr. Malloy. Discussion on that. Yes. A, a yes. Ms. Frenchko. Um, hang on a second. So because it appears that there is a bidding irregularity and the planning commission recommended to waive it without showing that it's allowable. And we have other one, two, three, four, five, so many other vendors there that probably did have their packet correct when they sent it in. I think that it creates liability. Perhaps, you know, Woodford might might have wanted to, to do it. They were the next lowest. And if they're things were submitted properly, then it would have, um, they, they would have um, certainly some kind of claim against the county. I think we need to do things responsibly and correctly. And because there's no verification from the planning commission that it was done correctly, it was just a recommendation to break the rules. Um, then I have to say, um, I'm going to vote no. Motion passes, number 17. Number 18 to enter into a non-reimbursable extension agreement for the extension of a sanitary sewer in accordance with the Ohio Revised Code Section 307.73 with Tim Arbogast for Hickory Ridge Villas Phase 2, Howland Township, Trumbull County Combined Sanitary Sewer District, Mosquito Creek Subdistrict, known as Project Number 1-S-24, subject to the approval of the Prosecutor's Office, and to approve detailed sewer drawings of Tim Arbogast for the extension of a sanitary sewer for Hickory Ridge Villas Phase 2. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cantalamesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. Frenchko? Yes. Item number 19 is to award the lowest and best bid response and enter into a contract with Utility Contracting, Inc., for the Bezetta and Mecca Wastewater Treatment Plants Nutrient Reduction Project, project number 8-S-20, for the total bid amount of $1,536,528. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cantalamesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. Frenchko? Yes. All right, that conducts our regularly uh, scheduled agenda items for today. Uh, I would like to make a motion to waive the prosecutors, um, to waive privilege on all that package of communication um, related to the- Is that what Mr. Smith was asking for? Yes. I'm fine with that. So am I. So wait, let me finish my motion because- oh, we, we just waive privilege, that's fine. Wait, Just do so it I'm making a motion to waive privilege on all of the information that related to the injection well that has was given to us last week from prosecutor's office. I'm fine with that. Are we waiving privilege? Is this about an injection well or is this about property rights on our property? It's or are you turning us into something off of our property that has nothing to do with us? No, this was the, okay. This was the what I said. If you read your email, you would know everything that was in that email that was sent from prosecutor's office via Bill Danzo. Right. So and I, it was in regards to property trespassing on our properties. What it was in, in regards to. I made that motion. Yeah. Second. Okay. Ms. Frunchko. Yes. For Cantala Mesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. And then uh, there's also uh, some concerns with Lordstown who. Um, reached out to the board because they submitted an application. Right, and it's on the maybe list. We discussed that at the workshop yesterday. I, I, um, Martha, you're a Trumbull County Auditor. I spoke with Mr. Peterson this morning 
Um, that application came in after the deadline. It was placed on the maybe list for the board. And it's that's where it says there's actually two of them. And they're both there waiting for the maybe list to be reviewed. I explained the whole process to Mr. Peterson this morning. He understands it. Um, he understands that uh, once we get through, once you get through the yes list, that you'll be reviewing those maybe requests. It's been taken care of. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Do you have something for us? <laughs> Kay Anderson? Okay, I brought the final report for the Levisburg Lowhead Dam study that you graciously Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Everybody in the community We've been asked uh, in a community when you think, I know it's gonna take some time to read over that. And uh, I guess the residents are just wondering how long it's gonna take or if we need to have another meeting but with two boards or what are your thoughts? My thoughts? We, we, we said, as we said, as we said at the last meeting, when this came in, we would be able to review it, and then we would reassemble with the Metro Parks Board at that time. So I think uh, we, as commissioners, can review it next Tuesday at our works regularly scheduled workshop, and then we can set a time or look at the schedule of the Metro Parks Board, see when their next board meeting is potentially, and go to them if they already have a regularly scheduled meeting. If not, then we can call a special meeting with them to do as we did before and review this with the topic to be to review this uh, and then make decisions after that at our next public meeting. Okay. I I will give you my thoughts. I I spoke with the representatives from um, when they went, they came downtown about removing the dam and the uh, grants announcement in, in Warren. De uh, I think Debbie Roth was there. Was she? Or no, maybe she wasn't because she was working. Uh, I spoke to some of the representatives from the state, and they are just full speed. They are full speed ahead on what their intentions are. And my and I expressed concerns even about the process for funding projects such as this. I think that it's missing. Uh, I think that their entire process is missing um, the public participation of the community that's represented. And when they're ranking them, they should consider the wishes of the communities that are impacted, such as our township. I, I, I spoke to them for about 20 minutes and they just, it was like falling on, on deaf ears because my impression was that the state absolutely wanted to do this. Who in the state absolutely wanted um, to do this? You said the state, who? Yeah. the governor? The EPA Governor's director, who? Yeah, the EPA director, and then there were two other people with her, and they were just, like, just nodding, and, you know, this is what we've already kind of decided. So I don't... You're absolutely wrong, because the EPA, the EPA representative met in my office right before that meeting yeah, and me. said, we don't care what you do. It's up to you. It's your community. All we're, all we're saying is there's an option here for money if you want to do it. If you don't do it, we want our money back, and we're going to spend it elsewhere. They had no interest in that. They didn't want any type of fiasco when the governor was there doing that at Summit Street. They know they're two separate issues. And they basically said, you know, you guys make the choice. Denny, so you, I was there beforehand, not there for the dog and pony speak, show. So saying, not for the grip and grin to smile and wave at the camera. I was there for the actual meeting part. For you to speak to something that happened there when you weren't is 
Well, you're saying they, and they nodded, and this and that, and you're, and, you're, and that's intent. So you're so you're a professional the, the body language spoke, reader. The one spoke to you. No, they they articulated that this was moving forward, and uh, as far as 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 they know, and that, that they were concerned. This is, I suggested um, changing even their their policies for selection to make sure that in the future that they consider the wishes of the communities that are contiguous to. Um, the area that they're affecting and they they just did sound like they were moving forward but again if the i think it would have to deal with the the metro parks if you can get them to to agree that would be it but who wants to send back money you know i just don't feel as positive about it i'm sorry i hope i'm hopeful but well, we haven't taken this to the state yet because we're trying to follow the procedure. That's why we brought it to you as commissioners because you do oversee Metro Parks. And I, I know that they own the dam. We all know that. But you all, all graciously put money in for a study. And I'm sorry it's taken because of personal reasons. I haven't got it to you in late, you know, the last couple of weeks. So... You have it now, and I guess I just need to go back and tell the residents, you know, probably be a week. Did you give it to the probate? Pardon? Judge? Pardon? Because we don't oversee that board. The probate judge is no part of our board. board meetings. No, I'm talking He appoints a board, the board makes a decision. He doesn't tell them what to do. Yeah. But he that would be overstepping his boundaries. I'll, I'll, I'll talk when you're done. You done? You'll talk when you're called upon. This isn't the Nikki show. There's rule, there's rules we follow here. Okay, so when so I, I'm speaking uninterrupted at this point. So uh, it's still important for him to know. I believe that there are alternatives because we need we need to make sure that the people who appoint the board members are aware of what they're doing. And if they're moving full speed ahead on something without consideration of the community and there are alternatives, he might not know that. And hopefully that will affect the selections moving forward or if someone needs to be replaced because they're not being responsive to the community. That's my... Okay. I just wanted to present it so you have it and uh, we'll be in touch, I'm sure. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, we do need to move fast on this. Let's talk about this Tuesday sure. and then set a meeting after that if need be. And, you know, we don't know what it says till we read it. We just got it. We got to read it and review it and act accordingly. Mr. Glenn. Mr. Glenn Trumbull County, I'd just like for the record to thank the 11th District Appellate Court for upholding the Honorable Judge Wyatt McKay's ruling against Ms. French Co. seeking a protection order against Mr. Shook. Uh, for the last three and a half years, she's tried to violate people's rights. And this goes to prove that she doesn't have a preponderance of evidence for any of this. Public meetings are for everyone that wants to show up and for her to single herself out and say that the public is stalking her or uh, nobody cares where she goes, who she sees. So I just want to thank the appellate court Thank you. Good morning to all those that are present. Um, your name, I'm your name just, again. oh, my name. <laughs> Worked on me this morning. Uh, my name is Shelly Jackson. And I just wanted to give a, um, uh, a we thank you uh, this morning uh, to uh, Commissioner Calenta Mesa and to uh, Commissioner uh, Malloy, and to our auditor, uh, Martha Yoder, uh, for their finances and their prayers for the uh, One Village Community um, outreach that took place on Sunday uh, of the No Child Left Behind uh, School Festival. Uh, we thank you for a vision that Pastor Kent Burns had and it's 11 years strong. Next year will be the 12th year for this festival. And so we thank you uh, for those uh, in government 
including Warren City Mayor Doug Franklin, uh, for the finances that came forth and the prayers that came forth. We also want to thank um, uh, Pastor Ken Barnes for having a vision. When we have a vision, we prosper. Not just one section, not this section, but all sections of this community and this county prosper. And so we thank you for the businesses that were here that donated finances. They also donated food and drinks and hamburgers <laughs> and breakfast sandwiches <laughs> because this was a weekend of servitude to families with children. Those children that came on Sunday are children who are going to be voters one day. They're going to replace this panel one day. They're going to replace me one day. And those that hold offices are going to be replaced. So by us loving on them, showing compassion towards them, we are truly blessed to have children that we can serve. So that one day they can stand here and say what I'm saying to whomever's on that panel. So with the we thank you, we thank you not just for the businesses who donated finances and food and drink, but we truly thank uh, God for the volunteers. My sister Joy back there was one of the volunteers uh, that it's necessary that we do all things as one. Because service to, to, to others can be difficult, extremely difficult. But if we do it as one, not I, but we, we are successful and all things take place that are extraordinary for our community, regardless of where we live. And I'll close with seeing those mothers and fathers and seeing those grandparents and those aunts and uncles who are what who are raising second and third generation children that there was the look of despair but once they got the book bags and was able to fellowship with their children and grandchildren there was a look of hope in their face See, we don't want the community to be depressed all the time. We want them to have hope. We want them to be joyful and laugh. And seeing those children run everywhere, screaming and hollering, was just wonderful. But I do, I, I forgot to thank the, the vendors, the paid vendors too, the petting zoo, uh, the gamers, uh, the um, uh, snow cones. We all know about snow cones. Who could get the bluest tongue? <laughs> okay. But it's the joyfulness that we must bring to our next generations. And so I thank you so much again and have a blessed day. Thank you. Anybody else have anything for the good at Trumbull County? I do want to, we got an email about a property that was, at, that was changed in the um, land use, and I would like to find out if that could be corrected, because I know that I saw the, all the information, and it wasn't, um, it wouldn't have been a DTE um appeal because it was already no we which... it's a clear it's not a clerical error it's not if it's not a clerical error it cannot be corrected until it goes to the board of revision and i'll remind all of the commissioners that we are separate elected officials and the commissioners are not my supervisors thank you thank you a clerical error okay yeah. so the property was actually um 
industrial. Hang on, I'll just. I'm gonna well, I'll explain to you what now. a clerical error. A clerical thank, error. Thank I'm first. sorry, Martha Yoder, Trumbull County Auditor. Sure. A clerical error is an error that can be corrected with it from with records from within our office because it it had to it cannot be corrected from records from within our office. It has to be filed as a board of revision complaint. Changed it in the first. It was changed from industrial. To, I'm not going. Hang listen, on a second. I'm just. Then not. Then fine. I'm going to speak as a commissioner. The, yes, the, not my supervisor thank you right okay so we have a person in the community who invested in warren and bought an industrial building converted it to residential went through all the hoops associated with converting it to residential properly uh every avenue that he was required to take took place and yet somehow the auditor's office switched it back to industrial I don't. And then whenever he complained about that, he was told that there was no avenue to correct it, to change it. However, the auditor's office took the initiative to change it the from industrial to residential. So I just don't quite understand why, if they didn't have the ability to change it, why they changed it wrong. That's what I don't understand. And that's what he doesn't understand. And at this point, He's threatening to file a lawsuit against not just the auditor, but against the board of commissioners because we serve on the, not me, but the board serves on the um, board of revision. And there is a, there is a, a problem there. So I just wanted to be clear about the complaint that we received and. It can be addressed through the board of revision and it will be if he files a complaint. But Martha Yoder, Trumbull not. County Auditor. In addition, I will be, first of all, the senior appraiser who's handled that particular case has been out all week with COVID, which is why it hasn't been addressed earlier this week. Okay. It will be addressed in, in consultation with our consultant who is an expert in these areas and will handle it appropriately. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we, a note caller. We were told um, in that, we were told in that email, and we got it forwarded to us that um, they were told that there was no avenue. And if you do have to do the board of revision, the deadline has already passed. Next year. So it would be for next year. Okay. All right. Because when they reach out to us, I want to be able to explain things as well. And that's, and and he he was upset. Well, you didn't meet with him and he wanted to meet with you and he was, he felt like he was blown off. So he reached out to me. Uh, sorry, Martha, but it, it wouldn't have come to this if people were responsive I, to him the I first have, time. He was responded to by the appropriate expert in my office. I have an office that, as I like to say, is the junk drawer of county government with many, many duties. I gave him to, I, I handed him off to the expert rather than I'm confused about how it got changed. Did the mass appraisal company just flip it up back over or something? I, I'm not going to explain that in a public meeting. It's I mean, first of all, look, I don't think you would fully understand any explanation I gave you. Second, look, look, I'm wrong. not going to explain it in a public You're meeting. Not not cutesy, just completely I'm I'm adorable. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. President? That's all I have for today. If not, make a motion to adjourn. Second. Mr. Cantola Mesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchko. Yes.